April 1, 2024, News Report 1. On April 1, 2024, former Taiwan President Ma Ying-ju arrived in Shenzhen, beginning his second trip to the mainland. At 2 p.m., Ma Ying-ju's flight from Southern Airlines landed at the Taiwan Affairs Office Liaison Office, where he was greeted by Director Yang Yi. At 2.40 p.m., Ma Ying-ju stepped off the gangway, and Pan Xianzhang, Deputy Director of the Taiwan Affairs Office, was at the gangway to greet him. Pan Xianzhang stated that the reception was the same as when Ma Ying-ju visited China in March 2023, but there was no red carpet, as was the case last year. After exchanging pleasantries with Pan Xianzhang, Ma Ying-ju shook hands with several Chinese officials before leaving the airport without giving interviews, waving to the media before boarding a bus. After leaving the airport, Ma Ying-ju visited DJ Tencent and then met with the director of the Taiwan Affairs Office, Song Tao, at the Wuzhou Hotel. At the start of the meeting, Song Tao conveyed warm greetings and good wishes from General Secretary Xi Jinping to Ma Ying-ju. He emphasized that compatriots on both sides of the strait are one family and should often interact, stay in touch, work together, and jointly shoulder the responsibility of revitalizing the Chinese nation. In his remarks, Ma Ying-ju stated that peaceful and stable cross-strait relations are essential to ensuring the well-being of people on both sides and achieving the greatest interests of the Chinese nation. He reiterated that peace is of great significance to the world as a whole and that the two sides share a common history. However, Ma Ying-ju did not mention giving up the use of force. After delivering his speech, staff requested that the media leave. Ma Ying-ju's office later issued a press release detailing his remarks, in which he stated that during his tenure, cross-strait relations had reached the 1992 consensus, and he opposed Taiwan independence, which was the political basis for the two sides to move forward together. Ma Ying-ju stated that during his eight years in office, no one in the world believed that there would be a war between the two sides. Ma Ying-ju also made a farewell speech at Taoyuan International Airport, stating that his visit to the mainland again was to convey the Taiwanese people's love for peace and their desire to avoid war amid the increasingly tense situation across the strait. He emphasized that peace is achieved through strength, not surrender. Ma Ying-ju stated that this visit is a journey of peace and friendship. He believed that if peace is not based on strength, there is no choice but surrender. The report also mentioned that following Ma Ying-ju, four prominent members of the Kuomintang, KMT, will visit mainland China one after another. Former KMT Vice Chairman Hao Longbin plans to attend the Emperor's Ancestral Ceremony in Hunan Province on April 11. Former Legislative Yuan Speaker Wang Jinping will visit Mount Wutai in Shangxi in May to attend an event. Former KMT Secretary General Li Ganlong will also go to Shangxi in May to attend the Shenong Sacrifice. Another former KMT Chairman, Hong Xiuzhu, plans to attend the Cross Strait Youth Development Forum in Hangzhou on July 6. Taiwanese current affairs commentator Zhang Yuhua stated on YouTube that the wave of visits by KMT officials to the mainland has put great pressure on the Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, because before May 20, the inauguration date, the DPP considered using the Anti-Infiltration Act to handle these visits by KMT officials to the mainland. News Report 2 BBC reported that the Mexican government stated that on March 29, the bodies of eight Chinese immigrants, seven women and one man, were found on a beach in Oaxaca, Mexico. The eight Chinese people had departed from Tapachula, Mexico, on March 28 on a Mexican boat heading to the United States. Mexican authorities said that one man survived the boat journey, but the Mexican driver of the boat is missing. This route is a popular one for immigrants heading to the United States. One of the Chinese immigrants from Wuhan, named Yang Xian, said that the journey through Mexico by land is long and full of troubles, including gang extortion and pursuit by Mexican police. He said that if caught by the police, they would be deported. Therefore, some people choose to go by sea, but they do not know that the sea route is even more dangerous, as there is no turning back once at sea. 
This sailing accident has caused a great sensation in the immigrant community. According to statistics from U.S. Customs, last year saw over 52,000 illegal Chinese immigrants, far exceeding the previous annual level of about 1,500. Immigration lawyer Keek said that more and more people are choosing the route now because they are worried that Trump will close the U.S.-Mexico border after taking office, so they want to arrive in the U.S. as soon as possible. The U.S. Border Patrol tweeted on March 29 that a Chinese illegal immigrant broke into a military base in California and refused to leave, ultimately being arrested. The base is located in Imperial County, Southern California, 70 kilometers from the Mexican border. News Report 3 The United States and its allies are beginning to cooperate in two areas, industrial chain and homeland security, to counter coercion from China. In terms of the industrial chain, Nikkei News reported that Japan, the United States, and the Philippines have reached an agreement to strengthen the supply chain of metal nickel. China is the world's largest producer of nickel, and the Philippines is the second largest producer in the world. Therefore, the United States and Japan hope to cooperate with the Philippines to obtain a stable supply of nickel. In addition, the Nikkei reported that Japan and the European Union will establish a new framework for cooperation in April to jointly develop next-generation advanced materials, including sodium ion batteries and chip materials. This is aimed at quickly putting new materials into practical use and avoiding reliance on Chinese lithium batteries. In terms of homeland security, Politico reported that the United States, Japan, and the Philippines will conduct joint patrols in the South China Sea later this year to counter Chinese harassment of Philippine vessels in the South China Sea. This will be the first time the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force has conducted joint patrols with the U.S. and Philippine navies, indicating Japan's increasingly important role in the Indo-Pacific region. In addition, the United States, Japan, and South Korea are coordinating to hold a trilateral summit of the United States, Japan, and South Korea during the NATO summit in July to discuss how to deal with the increasing security risks from China and North Korea. Last August, the leaders of the United States, Japan, and South Korea held the first trilateral summit in Davis, California, and agreed to hold a trilateral summit every year, indicating that the U.S.-Japan-South Korea triangle relationship is becoming increasingly close. Recently, the Nikkei reported that two Chinese warships appeared at Cambodia's Rim naval base. This has raised concerns among Western countries that Rim could become a forward base for the Chinese Navy. In February, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Kirsten Brubeck met with Hun Sen, the son of Cambodia's Prime Minister, in Phnom Penh, expressing serious concern about the involvement of the Chinese military in the construction of the Rim base. News Report 4 According to Kyoto News, the Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs stated on March 30 that Japan and China held expert talks in Dalian on the issue of discharging nuclear wastewater into the sea. This was the first expert meeting between Japan and China since Japan began discharging nuclear wastewater in August last year. Participants from Japan included representatives from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, the Nuclear Regulatory Authority, and Tokyo Electric Power Company, while participants from China included experts from several research institutions. The Japanese side explained in detail the process of nuclear wastewater treatment, the safety of discharging into the sea, and how to monitor it based on scientific evidence. In November last year, during the APEC summit in San Francisco, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Chinese President Xi Jinping held talks, after which Kishida stated that China and Japan had reached a consensus on discharging nuclear wastewater into the sea and that they would find a solution through dialogue and scientific discussion by experts. Japanese diplomatic personnel stated that the purpose of this expert meeting was to implement the consensus of the leaders of China and Japan. Since August last year, TEPCO has discharged nuclear wastewater four times and will begin discharging 54,000 tons of nuclear wastewater in seven installments starting April 1 this year. Two weeks ago, 
when IAEA Director General Grossi visited Japan, he stated that the discharge of nuclear wastewater into the sea is safe and is very important for the supply of Japanese products. News Report 5 According to Agence France Presse, the independent bookstore, Jian Shan Bookstore, in Hong Kong closed on April 1. The reason for the closure is that since December last year, the bookstore has received letters from government departments every week, stating that it has been reported and that the government will prosecute the bookstore. Jian Shan Bookstore opened in 2018 and is located on a quiet street in the central district of Hong Kong Island. Although it does not have a large number of visitors, the bookstore often hosts various cultural activities. According to reports, after the 2019 anti-extradition movement, Jian Shan Bookstore continued to invite some democratic figures to hold lectures in the bookstore, which led the government to see it as a thorn in its side. The report pointed out that Jian Shan Bookstore's experience is not unique. The Hong Kong government tends to harass and intimidate civil society organizations in various ways. A recent study by the Asia Law Center at Georgetown University pointed out that since the implementation of the Hong Kong version of the National Security Law three and a half years ago, the Hong Kong government has pressured more than 90 non-governmental organizations and 22 media outlets, leading to the closure of many of them. These forcibly closed organizations include 30 labor rights organizations, 12 pro-democracy organizations, 11 student unions, and 10 political organizations. The methods used by the Hong Kong government to exert pressure include legal and non-legal means, including using triads for intimidation. The research report pointed out that this suppression has led to the gradual disintegration of Hong Kong's civil society organizations, with hundreds of social activists leaving Hong Kong, making the Hong Kong government's policies more prone to errors and harming good governance in Hong Kong. The report pointed out that once a society loses the supervision of good governance, various problems will arise. It is expected that after the legislation of Article 34 of the Basic Law, the Hong Kong government's crackdown on civil society will become more severe. News Report 6 Kyoto News reported that the Japanese government conducted consecutive two-day searches at Kobayashi Pharmaceuticals factories. On March 31, the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare and the Wakayama Prefectural Government searched Kobayashi Pharmaceuticals Factory in Wakayama Prefecture. On March 30, the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare and the Osaka City Government searched Kobayashi Pharmaceuticals Factory in Osaka. Kobayashi Pharmaceutical developed a health product called Red Yeast Rice Cholesterol Granules in 2021, claiming it to be the first in the world to use red yeast extract as a functional active ingredient. This active ingredient is claimed to have the effect of lowering blood lipids and cholesterol. Kobayashi Pharmaceutical issued an emergency recall of three health products containing red yeast ingredients on March 22 due to reported kidney problems in consumers. As of now, five people have died, and 114 people have been hospitalized. Kobayashi Pharmaceutical has promised to compensate patients for medical expenses, etc. News Report 7 Gigi Press reported that Republican Congressman Bay Ken stated in an NBC interview on March 31 that the U.S. Congress's impeachment investigation into President Biden is nearing its end, but so far, no evidence of Biden's wrongdoing has been found. The Republicans accuse Biden of participating in commercial transactions between his son Hunter and Ukraine and China for profit while serving as vice president. The impeachment investigation against Biden was launched by members of Congress in December 2023. Biden has said that these accusations are unfounded political tricks. The result now is likely that the investigation will end without finding evidence. News Report 8 Agents France Presse reported that Israeli military spokesperson Adria announced on March 30 that the Israeli military had killed two Hamas leaders at the West Bank Hospital. They were Hamas military intelligence leader Duwek and Hamas leader Najib in the west bank of the Jordan River. The Israeli military also released photos and videos of the killing of these two individuals. In addition, 
Reuters reported that the Israeli military bombed a car in Lebanon on March 31, killing the commander of the Hezbollah anti-tank missile unit, Ayasin. The Israeli military said that Ayasin had planned and carried out dozens of attacks against Israeli civilians and forces. As of now, Israel has killed 270 Hezbollah soldiers in Lebanon. Since the outbreak of the conflict in October last year, Hezbollah has launched rocket attacks against Israel from the southern mountains and villages of Lebanon, aiming to support Hamas. News Report 9 Agents France Presa reported that SMIC announced its 2023 annual report on March 28. According to the report, SMIC's operating income last year was $45.2 billion, a year-on-year -year decrease of 8.6%, and its profit was $4.8 billion, a decrease of 60%. This is the first time the company's profits have fallen since the United States imposed sanctions on SMIC. The annual report also shows that SMIC's main revenue was $44.5 billion, of which OEM revenue was $40.8 billion, a year-on-year -year decrease of 9.8%, and gross profit was $0.1 billion, a decrease of 17.8 percentage points. SMIC has been subject to U.S. sanctions since 2020, but the impact has been relatively small. However, profits fell sharply last year. News Report 10 The Guangzhou Meteorological Observatory announced on March 30 that Guangzhou entered summer on March 23. This is the earliest date Guangzhou has entered summer since records began in 1961. According to meteorological definitions, an average temperature above 22 degrees Celsius for five consecutive days is equivalent to entering summer. The Guangzhou Meteorological Observatory stated that the average temperature on March 23 was 22.6 degrees Celsius, and the average temperature remained above 22 degrees Celsius for five consecutive days from March 24 to March 29, confirming March 23 as the date Guangzhou entered summer this year. In the past, Guangzhou has mostly entered summer in mid-April, mainly around April 16, but this year it has advanced to March 23, breaking the record set on March 26, 2021. News Report 11 According to the paper, on March 30, a black Maybach intentionally hit pedestrians in Chengdu, resulting in two deaths and two injuries. Witnesses said the Maybach suddenly accelerated, swerving and hitting multiple pedestrians and parked vehicles before stopping. Photos show that the front hood of the Maybach has been severely damaged. Videos show that the driver of the vehicle was convulsing in the driver's seat, apparently in a confused state. The police said that the driver had been brought under control. Recently, there have been several incidents in China where cars intentionally hit pedestrians. On March 19, three incidents of intentional vehicle hitting occurred in Shenyang, Taizhou, and Beijing, resulting in multiple deaths. These incidents are very shocking and remind everyone to be extra careful when going out. 